Today on Filmland, we're in whatever the hell this is. I don't know what you call this. Speed Force Bubble? Yeah, that'll do. Hey guys, welcome to Filmland, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And after The Flash came back last week, I was flooded with requests for one specific effect. That's right, a whole bunch of you requested the effect when Barry stops Iris telling everyone in the courtroom that he is the Flash. Now, I wasn't entirely sure what to call this, so I just sent it on the Flash speed bubble effect, because he kind of just catches Iris in that speed force bubble. Make sense? I hope so. So in order to complete this effect, it's actually easier than you think. Now, you might be asking, how do we do that whole 360 pan around shot? Well, it's easier than you think. Now I know on the show they probably had a big dolly track all the way around the actors and they just shot that whole thing on location. But since we're indie filmmakers, meaning we have no money, we're gonna cheat this thing completely. Now how do we do this? Well, you shoot your actor on a green screen, slowly turning around on the spot. Then all we have to do is shoot a background plate to match that. And it's pretty simple guys. All you need to do is chuck your camera on a tripod and then tilt the camera around 360 degrees. It's as simple as that. Now I'll fully admit I didn't go full backyard indie effects because I have the iFootage X2 motion. So I just plonked my camera straight on there and just pulled the lever and I just filmed around the 360. It's the same principle, it's just, this is just a little bit fancier. Now it goes without saying, you also need to go to filmlinen.com slash downloads and grab the lightning effects pack. And this pack contains a whole bunch of lightning darting across the screen to composite into our shot. And for you Adobe CC users, there's also the project file so you can have a play with my actual lightning animations themselves. Now, you got all that? Let's get to work, shall we? Okay gang, here we are in After Effects and as you can see, I have my comp set up and ready to go. Now we have two videos layered on top of each other. One is this oddly handsome actor pretending to spin around on a green screen. And if we turn that off, you can see we also have a background plate swinging around in a circle. Now with the snap of a stupid sound effect, I'm going to key out that handsome actor. <coughs> Done. We're now left with our actor looking like the camera is moving around him in a smooth circle. Pretty damn easy. Huh? Now I just want to take this moment to mention that you don't have to make this one continuous shot. In the episode of The Flash itself, they continually cut from Barry's side to Iris' side and close-ups to both of them, all in this same scene. So in no way does this have to be one shot. I say this because it's much harder to put this shot together if it's just continually spinning in the same perspective. So make sure that you either cut into a close-up or change perspectives. This is one of the reasons I kept my shot short and cut to a close-up. That and I didn't have anyone else to film with. <laughs> so our next step is pretty easy guys, but it's still a bit of a pain. And that's adding the lightning to our scene. Easy because at this point I expect you all to be A-grade badasses at adding lightning to a shot. But it's a pain because we still have to make sure that it's coming in in waves and looks right. Now. Lucky for you, I've already done this. Now if you've downloaded the pack and have After Effects CC 2013 or higher, you'll see I've given you the project files. Hmm. Now, if you don't have CC, you'll still be able to use the movie files that I've included in this pack as well. Just make sure you have QuickTime installed. Now if you'd like to know how to make your own lightning animations like these right here, well, it's actually pretty damn easy. You simply start with our base saver project file on a solid like so, just like with our custom flash tutorial. And then we grab the pen tool and we draw a line similar to a lightning strike. Just make sure that it starts and ends out of the frame like so. Then we're gonna animate the start and end offset. Hit the stopwatch on start offset and crank it all the way back until it's off screen. We'll then skip ahead a few frames or as many as you like and crank that back up. We'll then head to around the three quarter mark, just here, and then we'll hit the stopwatch on end offset. And then we'll just head a couple of frames past our start keyframe and crank this one down to zero. If we check out a preview, you can see we now have a lightning strike that dances across the screen. Now guys, you can do as many of these as you like in this layer, or you can combine multiple layers together like I did to make up these lightning bursts. One other tip I recommend to really take this thing to the next level in detail is to 1. Add an adjustment layer, then head to Effect, Distort and add Turbulent Displace. Then have a play with both the amount and the shape until you're happy. 
and then we'll hit the stopwatch on evolution, head to the end of the comp and change that to 2. That way your lightning is not only moving across the screen, it's also changing shape and distorting as it moves. Pretty cool, hey? So if we import our lightning download pack into our project, we can then start adding these lightning animations to the comp like so. And of course, don't forget to change the transfer mode to screen. We'll then just start importing and layering and layering and layering until you reach the end of the comp and you're done with the top layer. Then we'll move down to underneath our actor layer and do the exact same thing. Import, layer, 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 and check out a preview as you're going to make sure you're on track. Now let me just say there's no hard and fast rule here guys. If we check out an example from the show, you can see that the lightning pops on and off in both directions and at random times. There's a couple of times where the lightning is just hanging out in the corner here. Mm, crazy that lightning being random. So just have a play and see what works for your shot. You can add as many or as few of these lightning animations as you like. Now of course, since we've got that lightning in place, we can then grab all the lightning layers we've got on top of our actors, right click and then pre-compose and we'll just name these lightning top. The exact same steps apply for the bottom layers. Just grab all those lightning layers, right click and hit pre-compose. And of course, if you wanna punch up that lightning a little bit more, just duplicate it. Bam. So that's the effect done, right? Well, not quite. If we check back to our example, there's still the matter of that weird blur that's around Barry and Iris that seems to outline them. Well, except for their beautiful faces, because that's how that would work, right? Well, guess what? That isn't very hard either, but just like with our lightning layers, it's just a little bit fiddly. So our first step is to pre-compose our actor footage, open that up in a new comp. Now, why did we do that? Well, it's so we can use adjustment layers without screwing up the rest of the background and the lightning that we just added. Next, let's grab the pen tool, and with our adjustment layer selected, draw a rough mask around the actor's body, around here, and maybe on the front here too. Basically, add as many masks as you like around the edge of your actor. We'll then hit F and crank that feather up around 25 to 50 pixels, just to make sure that it blends well. Let's then hit M on the keyboard, hit the stopwatch on mask path, and then head along the timeline, adjusting the shape and position of that mask to stick to our actor in the exact same spot. The end result should look a bit like this. Now guys, this may take some time, but it is worth the effort. Now that we have that done, let's add some effects to it. Let's head to effect, distort, and add turbulent displace. Now I'm gonna change the displacement to cross displacement, and I'm gonna set the amount to 12, and the size to 20. I'm then going to hit the stopwatch on offset, head all the way to the end of the comp, and crank it down to zero. That way when we play it back, you'll see the displacement actually looks like it's going upwards. And lastly, I'm going to head back to the start of the comp, hit the stopwatch on evolution, head to the end of the comp, and crank that up to two revolutions. That way we get a bit of movement in that displacement. And lastly, we're going to head back up to effect, head to blur and sharpen, and add directional blur. And all I'm going to do here is set this to 343 and set the blur length to 39.3. Essentially, we're just doing a wavy blur. Now there is one last step that I want to do to add a little bit of glow to this. And it's pretty simple, guys. All I'm going to do is duplicate my actor footage. And with the bottom layer selected, we're just going to head to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and add Camera Lens Blur. And I'm just going to crank that blur radius up to 25. That way we get sort of this halo glow around our actor and it's very, very easy to do. Now, if we check out a preview, you can see that the blur ripples and moves around our actor nice and smooth. And if we head back to our final shot now and check out a preview, that my friends is another flash effect. Done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Today on Filmland, we're in whatever the hell this is. I don't know what you call this, Speed Force Bubble. That'll do.
So guys, that's my take on the Flash Speed Force bubble effect. I still don't know what to call it. But as you can see, it's really not that hard to achieve that really cool fluid camera effect and adding the lightning and blur effects is pretty much a cinch. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, please smash that like button and share it up. I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, why not hit subscribe and make sure that if you are subscribed, you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single film learning episode. We've got a load of great content coming up and you don't want to miss a single one. We've got a couple other film learning episodes right there and as well as a fly in the shot. I've got my social media crap above my head. I post all the time, guys. Check that community tab. And until I see you next time, keep learning.